Hi, I'm Andros Townsend. Hi, I'm Asma Begovic. And welcome to Everton USA Live. So as me, we're obviously two to the new boys. Um, how have you settled in so far? Yeah, really good. I'm just, I mean, it's been um, it's been a week or so since I've signed. Um, it's been nice to be honest. Everyone's been so welcoming. Had a good couple of days at Finch Farm before we flew out here. So it's been good. Sometimes it's nice to get these preseason mm-hmm. trips. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, I feel it's definitely easier coming away as a group yeah. and spending twenty four seven with the boys as opposed to seeing each other for two hours at. Finch Farm, and yeah. then you're not really getting to know. Whereas now, I feel I feel like I've been here for for years. Yeah, exactly. We've had a nice bit of time with everyone. Obviously, a lot of training sessions. Uh, it's been it's been yeah, it's been quite tough. I mean, the heat hasn't made it easy, mm-hmm. which is obviously what we want in preseason. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's been a good week so far. I think. Was that was the heat similar to to Milan, or was this different level? No, dude, this is different level. <laughs> um, especially because we're we're training at nine nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it's still yeah, even there. it's it's yeah. roasting. It's roasting. I mean, in our game the other night, that first half was uh, it was like a sauna, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, I I played forty five. I showered. I came out the second half. Not one bit of sun. It was cool. It was breezy. <laughs> and then our first half was literally you did one sprint and done done done. Yeah. Literally having to hands on the knees. But how did you find the first game? I think it was good for us. I mean, we had a really good test. I thought they were a good side. Yeah. Um, which is what you want. You don't want an easy games where you kind of have your way the whole time. So I think the fact that we had a really good test was good for us. Um, good sort of, you know, level to see where we, where we are, what standard we're at and fitness wise. And of course, in terms of our football and what we're trying to, you know, take on from the manager. I think people tend to forget as well when you play these teams, they're used to those conditions. They're used yeah. to play in high heat. And Hannah's, I think Hannah said that these guys play in altitude, their home game. So, oh, yeah. do you know what I mean? But also, I think they're in the middle of their season, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? So, obviously, they've got a bit of a fitness advantage and everything. So, you know, I think a great test for us. Good crowd. The atmosphere was back, which is something that was missed, I think, mm-hmm. from everyone. How did you feel having the fans? Oh, it was amazing. Nice. Yeah, it's amazing. It's been, I can't remember the last time I had a preseason tour with yeah. COVID and what have you. So, it was nice to come out here. Obviously, our first time experiencing the Evertonians in, in yeah. America. They're very passionate. Um, a lot of Colombians in the crowd yeah. in North Carolina, yeah. so yeah, it was a great occasion. I'm sure they enjoyed it just as much yeah. as we did playing our first game. Yeah, so it was fun. You know, it was nice for us to get a, get a good test. Everyone get the minutes, get a win, and now we focus on the next one and hopefully mm. finish this trip off in a good way. And and then we go home, and the Premier League's just around the corner. <laughs> Literally, so. yeah, yeah. As me, obviously, we spoke before about the first game and how well you played as a keeper. Do you enjoy shootouts or do you dread it? Um, I mean, uh, I'd sort of say somewhere in between. I don't think it's really uh, one you want to dread because that brings a lot of negativity and I don't think it's particularly enjoyable because there's so much at stake normally. Mm-hmm. That was probably a little bit more of a fun one because yeah. it's more of a friendly tournament, but um, somewhere in between, of course, trying to do your job and knowing that, you know, how difficult it is to save penalties. Um, it's always going to be a tricky, tricky task and thing to do, so... Just nice that it worked out for us. Little known fact as well, we actually faced each other in a penalty shootout last season. Um, oh, yeah, in the, the yeah, Cup. It's yeah. the Palace versus Bournemouth. Yeah. So and you scored one, didn't you? I scored one. Uh, you missed yours. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I, I was talking to you about this yesterday, um, or a couple of days ago when the game was, um, and I've never taken them, all these years, never taken a penalty. So, boom, a year ago, we have the, the Cup game, I've got to take one, never taken yeah. one. What do I do? I just smashed it. Wayne Hennessy saves it. Thankfully, he skied the he's next one. Absolutely skied it. Kicked it out of the stadium, didn't he? Yeah. So when you took that penalty yeah. the other day, was you, did your mind automatically go back to that penalty shooter? It did a little yeah. bit. Now it's like, just save again. Yeah. See, I hope for the better result. <laughs> because I've never, but I, I don't know, Kino, I was talking to Kino, and he said, you know, have you ever taken one? I said the same story. I'm like, I should probably start practicing yeah. penalties because yeah. you just never know now. Like, with the quality that the hour lads was yeah, taking yeah. and stuff, you just you can go on now a little bit longer than before. Nice. Uh, what was it like with the Everton fans behind the goal? Yeah, I mean, really good. Um, I think we've all missed sort of fans at games and the atmosphere and everything that comes with that. So 
to have that bit of an atmosphere at the game was amazing. Uh, to see so many Evertonians or, and at Everton fans was was probably more than I expected. And that obviously shows again how big of a club it is and the reach that he has. So um, I thought it was a great atmosphere. What did you think? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, like when you go 18 months with no fans in the stadium, it's mad how much louder they sound. Yeah. What was it, 20,000 there the other night and sounded like a sellout, sounded yeah, exactly. like 60s, 70s. Yeah. It's mad how we've just got used to silence and when they've come back in, they're sounding 10 times louder than they were before. Yeah, that was really, really good. Long season with Bournemouth last year. How was it? Um, it was it was good and bad. Um, an absolute grind. I mean, the championship's one of the most difficult leagues in the world. Mm. Um, just for the amount of games that you have to play and I think the amount of good teams that are in that league and I think just uh, there isn't a huge difference between 1 and 24. So every game was difficult. Um, yeah, pleasing to play over 50 games and obviously get us in the playoffs. Um, but unfortunately, we just ran out of steam at the end. Um, had a little bit of bad luck and there you go. I've actually said in the past that I found the championship a lot harder than the Premier League because yeah. of the amount of games and the stamina of opposition. Well, Andros, I mean... Um, because also last year was condensed. Oh, yeah. We literally played every Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, mm-hmm. Tuesday. There was not only the international break in March, one game was postponed to COVID into the one week we had, yeah. you know, in between. Yeah. Um, and that was it. We actually played 46 games short, but plus we had a couple cup games each side. We went to the FA Cup quarterfinals. Honestly, wow. we, we played all year, which was, you know, once you get in the rhythm, mm. you don't think of anything else, mm. you think back after, it's all just a blur, because it's one game, boom, you travel. It's, it's easy as a keeper, though, you always do, do that. <laughs> hey, so I'm glad I was, was in that position. <laughs> nice, I think that's it for me. If you ever wondered what a goalkeeper session looks like, take a look. Give yourself a good smile, okay? Touch off, moving in, boom, volley. Okay. Yeah, so you maybe come for a cross, it's popped down, yeah. or it's dropped down, boom, moving in that bang. Yeah? yeah? Make sure we're moving across to where the ball is. Print down. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's fantastic. There you go. That's the difference. We're ready for it. Flat ball side. Difference between that one and the last one. Difference between that one and the last one. I was ready for the same yeah, what, 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 what did you assume from that one? There, yeah. Yeah. Whereas there, you've just gone boom and then you've reacted off it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay, fantastic. Two. Yeah, that allows you to do that. Oh, you finished. Yeah. Outside the box. Well done. Yep. Good. Well done. Last one. I know, uh, three more. So Asmi, a um, couple of questions from the, the fans on social media have come in and I'm going straight to the point. I'm not beating around the bush. <laughs> okay, on, this man. is from Peter Bester and his question is, Asmi, how do you feel about all the love your wife and Jerry have been getting from the Everton fans? Oh yeah, that's been, uh, that's been pretty cool. It started up something quite innocent. Um, you know, my wife's obviously been in, into football for a long time and she uh, she's a professional dressage rider so she thought it'd be cool to kind of dress up in the everything gear and get Jerry involved and uh, it's gone down like an absolute storm so um, it's been really cool so far uh, the love of us is just overall from I think all, all the Everton fans since since you know we've joined has been overwhelming and really pleasing so the fact that uh, Nicole and Jerry are getting a bit of love is uh, it's pretty cool. You know the thing that surprised me most is obviously I knew Everton was a big football club but how big the actual fan base is yeah. and signing here and the, all the comments on social media has been overwhelming. Right, this is from Emmett. If you weren't a footballer, what would you be doing? You know, we've, we get asked that question a lot. Um, you know, very fortunate that I've only ever wanted to be a 
footballer, obviously a goalkeeper, so plan A has worked out pretty well. I never had a plan B, but I, I definitely would be in the game in a different capacity. Mm-hmm. Football's been my life, goalkeeping sort of been my life, so maybe I would have gone down the coaching routes or um, scouting or something like that, I think, just just the way of staying in the game. How about you? Yeah, I'm the same. I never really, I know it's probably the wrong message to give up, but I never really had a plan B. I was terrible in school. As soon as it looked like I was good enough to maybe have a career, I just switched off in school, didn't get any qualifications. So if I wasn't, a, I hope yeah. kids are not listening to this yeah. and taking my advice. But have a plan B. Yeah, yeah. definitely have a plan B because I've seen, <laughs> I've seen so many friends who I've played well, with who obviously weren't as fortunate as me and obviously didn't have that's the qualifications. The thing, isn't it? I mean, we're, we're you know, two of the luckier ones. Mm. But you see so many on the other side of it and... Um, yeah, definitely, definitely do your schoolwork. Uh, try and be as prepared for all eventualities as you mm-hmm. can. This is from George. Which player is the smartest? Okay, <laughs> good question. I mean, we haven't got to know everyone. Yeah. Good excuse. Just yet. We've had, we did have a quiz the other night. Ah, yeah. We did have a quiz the other night. Um, so that kind of showed a couple of true colors. Mm. Listen, I think we got to be up there, surely. I think Seamus has got yeah. a bit... Um, oh, that was struggling. <laughs> that was struggling, yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, shall <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, this is from Alcaz Raji. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Oh, I don't know how you choose. I mean, both incredible what they've accomplished. Um, been lucky to play against them both. I mean, Ronaldo a couple more times and he's tortured us every time we played against him so <laughs> hands off to boy I really don't know how to choose how about you I think for me Messi came out of the womb and he was he was had God given talent yeah. whereas for me I appreciate Ronaldo more because he had to work at it yeah. when he first came to England he was skinny he was skillful he had no in product but he's had to work at his game to get to the same level as Messi so even though for me they're at the same level I appreciate Ronaldo a lot more because of the hard work he had to put yeah. has to put in. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> okay, this is for both of us uh, from EFC. Kane. Best moment in both of your careers so far. Um, Scoring the winning penalty. Yeah, the winning penalty. Well, that, that was a good. <laughs> that was a good moment. Winning the Florida Cup. That was pretty awesome. Um, you know, I think club wise. Winning the title with Chelsea was pretty cool. You know, just to be part of a team like that all year, the sacrifice you have to make and to see what goes into a team like that was awesome. Internationally playing at the World Cup in Brazil 2014. Yeah. Um, that's probably my overall highlight just because of everything that went into that tournament, what it meant to our country, you know, us individually, um, and just the stage that it was. So I'd probably go for those two moments. Did you get a medal for that Chelsea one? Yeah, did you? Oh, yeah, nice. I got a medal. Um, obviously, made enough appearances. I don't know what the rules were exactly, mm. but actually, that's that's the biggest thing I took away from it is that, you know, there was obviously guys that played more than others, but it, how much it took a team yeah. to to keep the standard yeah. every day, and not sulk or not you know affect the team in a negative way in any way, shape, or form. So I think that was really what that group of players, and I'm still friends with a lot of them you know, how close we were mm. and to be able to achieve anything, I think that's, that's what it takes. Unfortunately, mine is not as good as yours. Mine would be uh, making my debut for England uh, when I was 22, um, playing, we had to win, it was a must win game against Montenegro to qualify for the 2014 World Cup, made my debut, scored, got man in the match and we ended up qualifying, we won 3-1, so I'm qualified, so... It's a good moment, yeah, it's a good moment a, but it's, a, it doesn't beat winning the Premier League or playing in the yeah. in, in the World Cup 2014, right. but yeah, that, that was my moment so far. Hopefully I've better memories hey, in these next few years. Plenty, to, yeah, plenty of years still to come, yeah. Um, again, for both of us, best player you have played with against? God. Um, best player played with? Um, my God. I did choose one. Um, I'll go just for the freak of nature of the years. I go with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, obviously got to play with him at the age of 30, 39. And to is, see him. Is, is he exactly as he's portrayed in the media? Um, in, in football terms, yes. Yeah. You know, he's incredibly driven. He's incredibly direct. 
uh, demanding of himself and everybody in, on the team. Mm. So maybe people will take him the wrong way, but he really does it because he wants the best for everyone. And when he came in and, you know, what I saw the first hand, the way he pushed himself every single day, the way he pushes everybody else every single day was, was impressive. Mm. Um, so I, I'd go for him, but, you know, I was, I was lucky that even that team had so many good players, Chelsea squad, all this kind of stuff. But I'll go for him. And against, again, we mentioned earlier Ronaldo, mm. um, you know, when he was probably at the peak of his powers, obviously he's adapted his game a little yeah. bit more recently, but he was just almost unstoppable because how, if you make him go left, he'll go left mm. and beat you. He going behind, goes to short, set pieces, headers. <laughs> Oh, was, that, was that for Portsmouth? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a couple of times for Portsmouth, but mainly for Portugal. I mean, oh, they okay. destroyed us a couple yeah. of times, you know, in big games, trying to qualify for major tournaments. And, of course, you get the luck of Portugal <laughs> in the playoff. <laughs> You're like, oh, thanks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I just, at the, those moments, you almost felt like whatever you did, unless you quadruple teamed him, mm. which is not possible, um, you weren't going to stop him. Nice. Go uh, for what are yours? Best player I've played with, uh, that's a tough one. I'd probably say Wilfred Zaha, mm -hmm. natural talent and watch him on a day-to-day -day basis, the way he'd make players, including myself, look silly, um, so powerful, so strong, natural ability, uh, skillful, he's got it all. And yeah, for me, it was a pleasure not only playing with him, but learning from him on a day-to-day -day basis the past five years. Against, best player I've played against. Probably not the best, but the one that sticks in my mind is Ryan Giggs. Yeah. Obviously, myself being a winger growing up, Ryan Giggs was the idol. I managed to play um, when I was 21 on loan at QPR and it was his last season in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to, to play against him. Uh, asked the kit man for his shirt after the game, he said no, but... Uh, <laughs> And I know, you never get that chance. Yeah. Yeah, man, you know, what about some fullbacks? Yeah. I mean, you must have played against some pretty. Um, you know what? Again, Carl Walker and Danny Rose in the, when they were in their prime, yeah. training against them every day was a slog. It was tough. Danny Rose, especially, so aggressive, um, strong, quick, puts his foot in. We literally, literally kick lumps out of each other yeah. in training every day. So yeah, so fullbacks wise, Carl Walker and and Danny Rose for sure. Um, Last one for me from David from Oregon. As an away player, what's it like coming and playing at historic Goodison Park? Yeah, I mean, um, it was always pretty pretty special. I mean, one of the games you look forward to, uh, which is part of the attraction of actually mm -hmm. coming to play for Everton and being part of this club, um, is just uh, the atmosphere at Goodison. Uh, it's special. It's still got that feel of that little bit of an older ground and that special atmosphere, which you don't get in you know, a lot of the stadiums now. Um, and I think you can just tell from the outside looking in what a special club and fan base it is. And yeah, just really looking forward to experiencing firsthand on really and side. actually having them yeah. on your side yeah. rather than against because playing a good man man is always tough, no matter what. Honestly, I was saying, even before I joined Everton, I don't remember a good game I've ever played at Goodison Park. It's such a tough place to come to. Yeah. Like you said, like it's an old-fashioned ground where the fans are literally on the pitch. It's similar to Selfless Park, when I had at Palace, like the fans are on the pitch and they're creating a hostile atmosphere for, for an opposing player. So, like you, I'm glad that hopefully they're going to be on our side <laughs> for the next few years. Definitely. So now is the time for us to have a little quiz to test our uh, knowledge of either Scouse or American. So, good luck, Andrew. Should be good fun. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'll, I'll start it off here for you. Um, Jonesing. Jonesing. That sounds American. I can't tell you what it means, but it just sounds American. Is that your final answer? answer is American. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're correct. <laughs> yeah, it is American, and that means it means to crave something. Okay, Jonesy. Nice. Okay. Gegging in. Let's get rid of Scouse. <laughs> just sounds Scouse, did it? Is that your final answer? Yeah, yeah. I'll go Scouse. Yes, yeah, Scouse, and it means to join in when not invited. Gagging in. Gagging in. We might have to gag in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, second one for you. Jib it off. 
Sorry? Jib it off. Again, that's very scouse. Jib it off. Jib it off. Yeah. I'm going to scouse. <laughs> Again, I've no idea what it means, but it just sounds scouse. Scouse it is. Uh, what it means is to end or finish something. Kick it, kick it off. Jib it off. Jib it off. Okay. <laughs> Whooping soccer. <laughs> Whooping soccer. I'm going to have to go with American. It is American and it means the US mis- Midwestern way to say something is wonderful. Whooping soccer. <laughs> hey, you learn something new every yeah. day. Don't you? And we're acing this quiz. <laughs> hey, take that. Um, webs. 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 I'm going to scouts. That is scouts. Yeah, scouts, yeah. Yeah, it's trainers. Webs. Wow. Webs. Yeah. No idea. I had no idea. <laughs> Janky. I'm going to go American. It is American. And it means of poor quality. So those webs are janky. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. <laughs> two. Rascal. 3-3. Three, three. All right. Um, fourth one for you is... I mean, sorry about the pronunciation, but Catty Wampus. <laughs> it's got cool to be American. Say again. Catty Wampus. Catty Wampus. Yeah. It has to be American. <laughs> yes, it yeah. is American. When things are messed up or sideways. What was the word? Catty Wampus. Catty Wampus. You just know those big long words are American. Blurt. Blurt. A scout? It is, and it means idiot. You blurt. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, the last one is Jarg. Jarg. Yeah. That's a tough one. Or Yarg. I don't know. I don't know which way to pronounce it. Yarg. I'm going to go American. Yeah, it is scouts, unfortunately. Oh. It means fake. Fake. Jog. J-A-R-G. Jog. Is it jog or jog? Jog. Okay. Your hey, I don't know if the pronunciation would have been. <laughs> your one is for the win, Azmi, and a clear round. Pit Leo. Pit Leo. Pit Leo. <laughs> Is that? Pidlio. It's got one of those apostrophes. So Pidli, apostrophe O, Pidlio. That's a, a, this is a complete guess, but I'll go American. Yes, it is American. It means small or small amount of. Pidlio. Do you know how to pronounce that one? Yeah, that's right. Pidlio, yeah. yeah. Congrats. Thanks, mate. So, Andros, um, I've got a couple questions for you. Fire away. Um, obviously, you left Crystal Palace at the end of last season. Mm-hmm. Um, joined Everton, I guess, a couple of weeks into preseason. How did you keep yourself fit, I guess, over a bit of a longer break? Yeah, I was very fortunate. I was able to go in um, at my first club, Spurs. They let me use facilities. I trained with the under 23s there. Oh, nice. So I was, at least I was able to train in a group and keep fit. So when the move did happen, I was able to literally go straight into it. And as you as you know from the training so far, it's intense. It's yeah. it's full throttle. So thankfully, I was able to get up to speed quite quickly. Exactly. Uh, who, who's the manager? Ryan Mason let you. Yeah, Ryan Mason. Yeah. yeah, he's he's like the academy manager, so he oversees okay. the under eighteen and the under twenty three. So thankfully, I was able to use my contacts nice. there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> goodness, who did? Um, What's the manager like? You've, you've had a bit of time with him at Newcastle. Yeah. Um, what's he like? He's, his, intention, his attention to detail is incredible. Um, he leaves no stone unturned. Uh, you've probably seen in training that the, the tactical work we do, we run through everything that we're going to face in a game. And The biggest compliment I can give him is he never give, gives compliments. He's always um, looking to improve players. 
in training this morning, I had a very good training session. Literally two minutes before the end of training, I was, I was knackered and I tried to do a silly skill and lost it. And he literally pulled me to the side with a couple of others and we literally spoke for 10, 15 minutes about why we shouldn't do that, what we need to do better. So he's always, he never lets you settle. He's always trying to improve, improve you as a player. And for me, especially with my mentality and the way I like to do things, I always want to be pushed. I don't want someone to tell me, you did great, what a great shot, what a great goal, what a great cross. I want someone to be constantly challenging me. And I did well under him uh, when we was at Newcastle for those reasons. Yeah. And hopefully I can do well here for, for, the, for the same reasons. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, just sort of taste I've had, you know, initially you can see that. Mm -hmm. um, why he's been at the highest level yeah. for so long. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I guess both of us, but you know, you're, you've been around the Premier League a long time. You come into the squad. It's one of the more experienced guys, <laughs> shall we say. Um, do you think there's a good mix of youth and experience in the squad from what you've seen so far? Yeah, definitely. Um, me, me, you and Seamus have kind of had the, the group in, uh, in the lunch and dinner. We sit together and we're more three senior players out of the group. But listen, you've got some great youngsters there. You've got Mason, you've got Ben, you've got... Damari coming in is a very talented player, so it's a great blend. And the best teams I've played under have had great youth players and had very experienced, um, good pros, shall I say, yeah. good pros to kind of steer them in the right direction. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a good balance. I'm sure the manager will add more experience as we go along and um, bring in a couple of younger players as well. And hopefully, it'll give it'll put us on the right track for the season. Perfect. Looking forward to it. American and Everton legend Tim Howard has also been in um, Florida this week. Here's what he's got up to. Everton, Turkey, eh? So we're, we're coming from Turkey. Hey, Andros, you scored a magical goal against City. What was your feeling? I was probably just as shocked as <laughs> anyone else. I, like, I, you, listen, my trademark is coming in off the right and hitting it with my left foot. Never have I ever scored a volley. So to score a volley like that, where I've connected so cleanly against Man City, in Man City Stadium, it was just like... Stuff dreams are made of, and you, as I'm running off the celebration, you can see the shock in my face, and yeah. it's a, the best goal I've ever scored, and the best goal I will ever score. I, I can easily say that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a goal it was <laughs> <laughs> to beat that. It's going to yeah. take some doing. So um, that, that that was pretty pretty incredible. Um, Let me add to that. What's the best goal you've conceded? Best goal I've conceded. Um, oh, that's a good. A good, good, um, good question. I'll give you. Um, I remember playing for Stoke, and um, we played Valencia. Mm -hmm. uh, played Valencia in the Europa League, and and we're playing at home first leg before we have to go to Mestalla, and we're actually doing all right. And they score, I think Mehmet Topal, someone like that rings a rings a bell, thirty yards out, literally. We're like, okay, go on to. You know, shoot, <laughs> touch out of his feet, bam! And Andrews, I'm not kidding you. I gave it everything I had to my left hand yeah. side, and it literally went in the ninety. Like, couldn't have been more perfect. And I was, because I gave it everything. I said, shoot, it's gonna go over. Please go over. It's gone in. Yeah. And I looked after, and it was the most perfect strike you'll ever see. And that was like off the mind. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly yours. I mean. Was was obviously tougher skill, yeah. probably even yeah. on the volley. But the fact is, how 
perfect that was accurate yeah, yeah. I mean, i'll have to we'll have to youtube that one right? yeah there you go <laughs> so that was decent I won't mention any more of that um andros what's it like um this is from rob galkov andros what's it like having a father who's trying to make such a difference for kicking out racism in sport yeah it's great obviously uh he's worked tire tirelessly over the last probably five ten ten years now first as a volunteer uh, for kick it out just trying to exactly what it says on the team trying to kick out racism obviously it's, it's creeped into our game more the last few years and he's had to work harder but what people don't realize with kick it out is they're not a governing body they can't sanction people they can't hand out bans or fines what they have to do is educate from the ground up he does a lot of work he goes into a lot of academies he educates the, the kids when they're 16 17 18 so in 10 years time when these people are the future when they're 30 and when they're in um, high positions we're not having the same problems we have today so yeah, yeah it's great and we've seen trailblazers brave players like raheem sterling marcus rashford um, follow that lead and i think it's great that we're all starting to push back now um follow-up question for me on that actually is obviously as you said it's been creeping in a little bit again i mean the football i think society obviously mm -hmm. Uh, which is getting a lot of publicity, which I think is a good thing for awareness and everything. But of course, it's obviously in people's minds. Um, has there been a difference over the years? Would you, you know, dad know or feel that there has been improvement overall for us? It's, I know it's probably a bit yeah. of a tough and difficult and deep question, but has there been movement in the right direction? I think definitely after the last year or so, there's been a movement in the right direction in terms of maybe broadcasters and uh, like your big uh, broadcasters realizing that there, there isn't enough diversity and you've seen them make a conscious effort to make change you see in the adverts now where they're promoting um, kicking out racism whatever campaign they support so there's definitely been a move in the right direction but I think with social media now a lot of the comments you're seeing after games where a black player or an Asian player or a player of, uh, of colour has made a mistake and you're seeing the monkey emojis I think it's I don't think it's coming from a racist place. I think it's they want to make the news. They want to tell their friends. Yeah. It's, it's silly. It's, it's silly children doing yeah. children things. And unfortunately, we're at that stage now where the more we speak up, the more we're going to get children. I, I, I hope it's kids and children, and we're going to see them um, trying to have their five minutes of fame, which is sad to see. Yeah. Well, hopefully, keep up the good work mm -hmm. and get this, um, you know, heading in the right direction. A uh, question from Adam Andros is, how will you celebrate when you score your first goal? Because you almost had it in the end. Oh, almost had it. Man. Look almost. great from behind. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's, no, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really have a celebration. I just tend to go crazy. Yeah, yeah I just, whatever yeah. comes into my head, I'll leave a... Uh, run into the fans or knee slide or fist pump whatever I'm feeling at the minute hopefully my first goal is going to be an important goal and I can run wild and hopefully it's going to be at Goodison with the fans so I, I honestly don't know is the honest is the honest answer well we can't wait to see it so <laughs> see what happens hopefully sooner rather than later <laughs> yeah that'd be good, that'd be good. <laughs> nice nice I like that um, thanks you, thank you for all your support obviously we felt it over here in the States and yeah, really happy to be part of the club. Hope you enjoyed our little show. and um, Thanks for your questions. Yeah, and we'll see you back in the UK very soon. Or we'll see you Wednesday night. There you go.